Hey, everybody. Welcome to Signal 65 Video Insights. I'm president at Signal 65, Ryan Shrout. And uh, I'm joined by a good friend of mine, Bob Rosenberry, who is a commercial laptop product manager from HP. Bob, thanks for joining us. It's good to have you here. Um, you know what we want to uh, talk about today is we we've recently you know we've worked with HP on quite a few different reports. We recently published one looking at uh, AMD powered next gen AI PCs and kind of comparing how you know a couple you know a generation ago a couple of generations ago how the performance profile has changed, how the experiences have changed, and how the capabilities of these devices have really shifted how uh, businesses and consumers uh, utilize their devices. Um, I, I want to really start, though, by talking about how you view and HP views enterprises adopting AI. I think it's been one of the big questions uh, in the market in general, right, is we've got these capabilities. Uh, some of the big names in the industry are talking about AI PCs and Copilot Plus and all these different nom uh, nomenclatures. But how are you seeing these uh, technologies adopted? So um, a lot of the enterprise customers we talk to, they're telling us they want their users to benefit from the productivity gains offered by these tools, but they're really concerned about the speed and the cost of cloud-based solutions and a lot of concern around security and compliance, especially in regulated industries. So um, these needs point to really a business imperative to start adopting on-device AI for the ability to make those real-time decisions, you know, with the peace of mind that company secrets aren't being used to train public models, which is really important. But to support these AI workloads, new hardware is needed. And it's hardware that's built specifically to handle AI workloads on the device with new processor architectures. Yeah, so that's new new processor architectures, new devices that integrate those. But I'm curious, what, what types of applications are these organizations actually using uh, and from what your, what your research is showing today? And I think the biggest thing we're seeing, of course, is the Microsoft Copilot Plus features, like live translation and co-creation. So um, these are really powerful features for business users, but they have a minimum hardware requirement that only next generation PCs can meet. So um, we're also talking to forward thinking enterprises that are bringing their own tools, whether well, they're making their own tools based on local large language models. They're trained on internal data. So for example, in healthcare, um, patient data is highly confidential, subject to strict regulation. So they wanna keep that local. And finance is another area with similar needs. So these organizations are piloting tools that provide you know, fast and secure analysis and recommendations to provide automated responses. So another thing we're seeing is this flood of innovative AI applications hitting the market that use local AI to give workers what we like to call superpowers for things like video content creation, virtual coaching, um, virtual agents, and new security applications like deep fake detection. So all of these require more advanced personal computing platforms. It's interesting you bring up healthcare as well. I was recently at a doctor's appointment and there was a, a new sign on the door that I hadn't seen about them using ambient note taking, uh, which uh, you know I didn't dive a whole bunch into, but I assume is using AI for uh, listening to conversations and helping those doctors and nurses take notes. So really interesting integrations uh, that we're continuing to see. So just tell me the same thing happened to me too. Yeah. Um, it's one healthcare customer we talked to recently wanted to do um they, they wanted to do a, a first diagnosis based on on patient uh, data. So they wanted AI to actually start the diagnosis process, but they had to load up a lot of confidential patient data in in local models to make that happen. It's it's really interesting. It's go it's going to change everything, there's no doubt. So uh tell me a little bit about these new PCs, the processor architectures and what kind of the the different IP inside of them that is important to this process. There's an overview of how the new processor architectures work and um I know a lot of people talk about CPUs NPUs, GPUs, and maybe not know, you know the role that each of them play. There are four, there are four dedicated AI engines that work together to enable the mo most robust AI workloads. And sending the, you need to send the right task to the right engine at the right time. So the CPU is the main chip that performs the sequential operations and executes instructions. So, you know, everyday productivity tasks, the software you use every day, low latency AI workloads are processed on the CPU. The NPU is something new, and there's a, kind of a lot of buzz around it, right? But the NPU is a dedicated low-power AI engine that's integrated into the CPU package. 
And it's ideal for sustained tasks that mostly that run in the background, like security monitoring or video effects during calls. Everyone's familiar with using background blur and things like that. So um, when you use the NPU, your system consumes less power and the CPU and GPU are freed up to run other tasks and you're getting uh, better battery life for when those mundane tasks are running on the NPU. And then integrated GPUs are specialized chips uh, that are integrated into the CPU that perform the parallel computations for AI, graphics, and other really data-intensive tasks. Those GPUs provide the power to process AI workflows, but they consume uh, more, more energy. And then finally, you have discrete GPUs that are separate devices with their own memory and power supply. These can really greatly increase the AI processing power, typically used in things like workstations and servers, uh, a lot of times for AI tool development, not as a, like an end user uh, consumer of AI. They're used by developers that are developing AI applications. The discrete GPU offers the most performance and flexibility since it doesn't share any resources with the CPU, but it's a, it's a very, it's a very power hungry device as well. Yeah, so it's it's more for um, very kind of compute intensive AI workloads that are bursty. If uh, you know you don't want to worry about battery drain and things like that, it's it's interesting, right? Because a lot of the testing that we did. So at Signal sixty five, you go to signal sixty five dot com and go into our research section. You will see the report that we did in partnership with HP, kind of looking at these next generation AI PCs powered by different AMD processors, and we saw uh, a lot of data that backs up what you're saying, right? Uh, we looked at uh, some performance of um, uh, the Phi 3 Mini Instruct model, uh, which is an LLM of a small one as the Mini indicates, right? Running on uh, through the AMD Gaia, which is their framework to help accelerate LLMs on the NPU. And it was uh, going from a uh, an Elite Book 865 G10 to an Elite Book 8 G1A, right, which is the newest generation uh, powered by the Ryzen AI Pro processors. You know, we saw more than a three times improvement in performance, right, in terms of your tokens per second throughput. And that just means you're going to be able to uh, uh, get more performance, more capabilities, and more usability out of those exact same workloads if you upgrade the platforms. Interestingly, we've also saw several different areas where something wasn't even able to run on the previous generation products because maybe the model was too big or com too complex. For example, we showed uh, running the DeepSeq R1 distill version uh, with a Llama 8B base uh, in the same application, another LLM, getting you know 14 to 16 tokens per second on the new Ryzen AI platforms, but it was unable to run on the previous generation, right? So big, big advantages uh, to be seen in terms of pure AI performance. When you talk about efficiency, right? We looked at, you know, the, the very common example that you talked about, kind of a background blur using the, the studio effects features in a Teams call and found that the newer platforms offered the same or better, you know, up to 12% better performance when doing multitasking workloads, say a Teams call plus office productivity applications uh, at the same time. So you're getting better performance while running at you know up to 50% lower power consumption for the same workloads, right? That's gonna translate into longer battery life. It's gonna translate into a cooler system, a quieter system, all of those, those tangible benefits uh, that really come through with it. And then one of the more interesting kind of I would call it a forward-looking uh, uh, kind of AI use case, this AI image generation. We use the AMD, um, you know, kind of promoted Amuse AI tool with an STXL Turbo model, and you're able to, to run it at 67, up to almost 70% lower power to create these images, right? So if you're building PowerPoint presentations or any other kind of marketing content and you, you want to use the power uh, of AI to help accelerate and improve that process, you're going to do it much more efficiently with the latest generation of, of AMD processors. It's, it's really impressive to see uh, what they've been able to do uh, from a performance perspective there. We did a similar test where we, we used the Amuse tool and we had it generate over, generate a, an image over and over and over again until the battery died. Um, and no one would do that in real life, but we just wanted, we tried it with the GPU, then we tried it with the NPU. And the NPU, the, the battery lasted more than two and a half times longer um, 
than when we use the GPU. So it really shows the the efficiency gains that you get using that NPU. Yeah, I, I I think it's it's very compelling. Um, you know, we we've we've been talking about AI PCs for a while. You and I have been talking about AI PCs for a while now, but it does feel like we're at this threshold now where the applications, the use cases, uh, the performance and efficiency, and kind of software, uh, I'll call it maturity, is at a point where we're seeing real tangible benefits across a bunch of different consumer workloads. So I'm excited to see uh, how HP and these systems are going to kind of continue to improve and change. It brings me to my kind of last question for you, right? Is I always want to ask my guests kind of what, what's coming next or, or what's a forward-looking view of things, right? If, if you look towards further advancements in the commercial AI PC space, where do you think this is going? Like what's the next step? And, and, and what do you think is the most important way for us to look at this going forward? And I think you just touched on one thing is that software will incre increasingly be re-engineered to tap into these uh, these new AI engines and this, these tools, because now there's so much power that's coming to the endpoint that why not use it? Because, you know, data centers are pretty expensive, right? So um, things things moving, you know, more from the cloud to the edge for efficiency reasons, but also for, you know, cost reasons and and uh, I, as I mentioned earlier you've got the uh, the security and the and the regulatory restrictions that are over a lot of industries that are going to drive this so you know we're prepared to just keep making more and more powerful laptops for people to do uh to get more superpowers like we call them and um you know the future looks great. <laughs> And of course, obviously, make sure everybody goes to Signal65.com and go to the research section and look up this report on our HP EliteBook 8 G1A testing. Uh, it's It's got a lot of lot more information and data and performance results in it. Uh, we look at all the HP uh, software, like Polycam Studio that's in there. It, it's it's really, really good stuff, uh, all powered by that AMD Ryzen AI next generation processor. Uh, so, uh, Bob, thank you for joining us here. It's been great to talk to you. Thanks. It was my pleasure. And for everybody else, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.